Hello everyone, I am Kate King and I am super excited to share a brand new interview series with all of you where I will be interviewing various healing practitioners from different modalities and trajectories, everything from body workers and psychic mediums to martial artists and therapists who specialize in really amazing and inspiring areas of mental health. So kicking it off today is my interview with Marek Kromik, who is a really soulful and inspiring martial artist and teacher. I think you guys are going to love it. So stay tuned and check out this great interview. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more great information and to be included with all of these amazing interviews coming up. Just hit the bell next to the subscription button and you'll be notified every time I post a new one of these interviews. So take care, everybody, and enjoy the interview. Hi, Marek. Thanks so much Hi, for being here with me today. Absolutely. My pleasure. I'm really excited to hear about your work and what you do. Um, so can you start us off with a little introduction about maybe your story and how you got to where you are and um, the work that you do? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So again, thanks for having me. It's a wonderful sure. opportunity. For, for me to uh, chat with you for a little bit. Um, I have, uh, my journey starts in uh, Slovakia. I was born in a uh, uh, post-communist uh, country and uh, a lot of, lot of box mentality and, and a lot of scarcity and stuff. And uh, I was trying to always find a way out in some sense and, uh, you know, ended up coming to States, et cetera, and learn the language and it was a long, a long journey, and my interest was always in martial arts. And I think a lot of people have that, a lot of particular boys have that interest, and uh, it's it's uh, stuck with me for a long time. So what I do, I teach martial arts, and uh, I approach martial arts from perspective of not necessarily combat or um, or a, a competition, but from perspective of um, inclusiveness and learning environment and just uh, understanding your, your body movement, how, how your body moves and uh, understanding how, um, how mind can affect the body's movement as well. So in a nutshell, that's kind of, kind of what I do. Right, that sounds so great. So um, it's exciting that this has been a passion of yours for your whole life and you've been able to ultimately turn it into a meaningful career. I don't think yeah. they say that about their work. So I'm, I'm so glad that you have that. So do you practice mm -hmm. spe specific types of martial arts or um, are you just very eclectic in the way that you blend it? I know that your business is called Eclectic Ground. Right, very right, right. Yes, yes and yes. I pr uh, practice specific martial arts, but I also have uh, a variety of arts here and uh, um, have started to also invite other instructors to teach uh, within the studios. So um, I focus mainly on uh, Wing Chun Kung Fu, Tai Chi, um, kickboxing, as well as uh, more holistic approaches as a Qigong, which isn't necessarily martial art, but I include it in here. Uh, that's the whole mind part of it. And it's also as, uh, as much as a body part. Uh, and uh, uh, also do sound uh, sessions here. So sound sessions as in the drum circles or uh, Tibetan bowls that are these. And I'm very open to have um, some cooperation with, with other practitioners who are, who are of similar mindset. Mm. So, I love yeah. hearing about the way that you have that blend of the, the physical body and the mind space. And I'm guessing along with that mind body connection, you have some emotional release that comes up or some catharsis. Yes, yes, very much so. It's a, every practice, I think every physical practice, be it yoga or, or uh, you know, Tai Chi or whatnot, uh, they all have, because the body, when body is moving, you definitely get that um, ease of, of release of the emotion, ease in the body and release of the emotion. Uh, it's, it's, very, it's a very calming, definitely. At least most of my students say so, and I, and I, I agree. So <laughs> I know it can be biased, but uh, I, I have also seen some students struggle with the movement and uh after a little while when they were able to uh, shift around that they definitely began to like it a lot more uh, but it is it can be challenging to to find coordination in the body and it's not natural to all of us 
uh, but is that, you know, every movement works for different people. So uh, some people like yoga better than, than, for instance, Tai Chi or Pilates or dance or whatnot, but it's all movement and it's all beautiful. Mm-hmm. I imagine that there's a, a sweet spot between what people are already comfortable with and challenging them. I, I recently read a book by um, Susan Davis called Emotional Agility, and mm-hmm. she talks about this balance where we can be most emotionally agile and successful when we have, when we're challenged and competent. And so Mm -hmm. I wonder if you can speak a little bit to that, how it shows up either in your personal practice or with your clients, how do you kind of help them navigate where they're comfortable, but also challenged so that maybe they can push through some of those barriers and have a little bit more wellness come through because of that. Yes, it's true. Um, So, so for me, for instance, uh, martial arts, uh, one of the reasons I started to learn martial arts, besides that it looked so cool, <laughs> mm-hmm. was, was that I, what I gained from that was a confidence, was a physical confidence that if, if, I, if I was ever to be attacked somehow or something, I could actually take care of myself. Being of a smaller frame, it's, that's, you know, that's one thing that you might want to consider. And that's what I have done for myself and, and it definitely makes me feel a lot more confident comfortable in my body to know how to uh, make it move and how to use it as a weapon head if I ever need it to. <laughs> I hope never to need to anyway. So, um, and then uh, uh, remind me again, the second part of question. Uh, just curious if there was a way to help the customers that come to you to move through. I imagine people come with goals, whether they're yeah. physical, emotional. So using that balance of um, being challenged, but also having comfort level to kind of break through barriers. In Tai Chi specifically, there's a lot of challenge in the movement and learning how to coordinate your own body. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's it's one of those things where you have to uh, kind of do one thing with one hand, another thing with another hand, or or a part of the body is turning and part of your hand is lifting, et cetera. So there's a lot of uh, um, difficulty in the movement at the beginning but once your body understands what it's doing kind of like with dance kind of like with yoga once you learn the movement you can flow Mm -hmm. Um, and that flow brings you confidence at least to me it does it's knowing being aware of how the body is moving is like one of the most liberating uh, experiences that I can give to myself Um, besides others of course there are many but this is one of them and I find it very comforting So, so there's a uh, with, with Tai Chi, for instance, much like with yoga, it's a practice of a lifetime. It isn't, uh, you know, I think I'll go learn Tai Chi for a month or two. I mean, you could do that. Absolutely. You get always something out of it, but it is definitely a study of a lifetime. Mm-hmm. And uh, specifically for Tai Chi, it's, uh, uh, there's an external practice and an internal practice, much like in any martial art, really, actually, is there's the aspect of the physicality of movement. And then there's the aspect of the um, mindfulness of your of your movement and and your in, internal state really mm-hmm. how you feel mm-hmm. where your emotions are you know so so that has to be all in harmony in some sense mm-hmm. and uh, hence uh, you know if you look at any kind of uh, tai chi related pictures you will often see the symbol of yin and yang and that's a uh, that's a uh, basis of the of really of the of the whole practice is that there is always the aspect of one and the other the positive, the negative, the the you know the day, the night, the and it's it's the world that we live in. So, creating harmony within and creating a flow within the world that we are we're, we're in. Mm-hmm. And when you speak of harmony, I know that you have five principles that sort of draw on harmony and I think awareness. Can you speak to those a bit and maybe absolutely how you can impact people and help them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I, in my practice, I have incorporated these uh, five steps to um, get into the place of a harmony with yourself. Um, obviously, as if you are in harmony with yourself, you probably are also going to have easier time in the whole humanity. So that's my principle anyway. Uh, so, and uh, to me, to, to get there is, is really with awareness. If we don't have awareness about what we're wanting to do, nothing is going to change. So at least that's how I uh, learned about it. And, and that's, uh, that's what I have done. So one of the uh, first principle in, in my practice is alignment. And when I talk a lot about alignment, actually about all the, all the principles, they have an external and internal component. So alignment, external component is uh, becoming aware of the body. 
So, you know, if you were to close your eyes, don't have to do that right now, particularly if you're uh, listening or driving or whatever you're doing. But uh, um, if you were to uh, close your eyes at some point and just feel the space where your body is. So feel your neck, where the neck is. And feel that you may be maybe slouching a little bit, you know, see if you can lift that neck up. That's the first, first little idea. And then, then when you realize that you're now in the place of where the neck is lifting, the, the chin stays loose, relax the muscles in your neck. And just letting that head settle in a place. Then feel the spine, entire spine in its length. Elongate up without tension, because when we do that, we, what we do ten, typically tend to do is to create tension. And what we're trying to do is to release the tension actually. And one of the reasons we would want to release the tension is that when in the Tai Chi principles, for instance, when the tension in the body is released, the energy can flow. It's kind of like if you picture a, um, a hose and you have a water running through it, if you step on a hose or if you just bend it or something, Mm -hmm. then the flow stops. It makes me think about how um, we really need not only oxygen coming up to our brain, but we also, we need our energy to be able to move throughout our entire body so that our system can work together holistically. So that really makes exactly. sense. Exactly, exactly. Yes, beautifully said. Yeah, so so have, have that, uh, so the external experience of the alignment body. So we have the neck, the shoulders stay down and relaxed next to the body, not hunching forward, not, not too far back or anything. So, so there's the natural state where the body is upright and effortless. Mm -hmm. You can place yourself in that, but then relax. Yeah, so internally. That doesn't feel like a normal alignment for people in our world. Is that something no. that we want ourselves away from with hunching over computers and trying to yes. wear a mask and pretend that we're brave or whatever? Yes, yes, very much so. And it comes with the, with the, you know, the, the pressure of society. So then the, where the internal alignment comes into. And uh, just one more thing to the external alignment, you continue with this same with your, um, your pelvis, your, your hips, your knees, your ankles, your elbows, your wrists, and all your joints basically relax and release. So if I have like this, uh, my wrist is tense, I relax it, it does this, okay? Mm -hmm. It just releases. Now, I'm not saying you should, we should be walking like a wet noodles, but um, <laughs> have, the, have the intentional um, alignment of the body. And so going back to the internal piece is that if we are aligned, aligned internally, what, that, what does that mean? It means, to me, it means have um, your, what you want to uh, see in the world has to begin with you first. Mm -hmm. So have that internal monologue almost coming, coming through all the time. So what is it that I'm trying to create? What is it that I'm trying to see in the world? Am I that? Mm -hmm. Am I creating that for myself so that that brings me into one of my big interests of manifesting and yeah. really showing up for your life and holding in your mind and in your energetic space what you want and then living as closely in alignment with that as possible to be able to attract it and bring it back to yourself absolutely yeah it's beautiful mm -hmm. yeah so then, like I said, um, moving through the entire body externally and have that, have that presence of your understanding of what you want to world see as mm -hmm. and who you, do you look like that? You know, do you feel that way? Do you look like that? So confident or whatever it is, you know, whatever you want. So. Yeah, and that takes a measure of being honest with yourself. If you take a hard look at yourself and there are, are elements of misalignment or mm -hmm. areas where you're deceiving mm -hmm. yourself, it seems like mm -hmm. a self-accountability practice to be able to Absolutely. be really responsible for your own health, for your own happiness, for your own alignment, both physically and non-physically. Absolutely. And I'll touch one more thing up on this and then I'll move to the next one because uh, one of the things that you just mentioned just made, remind me, reminded me when we get into that place that, yeah, I think my neck is full, um, upright and my spine is up. Well, that's what you're used to. Mm -hmm. But if you, for instance, lay down on the floor flat, can you have comfortably your body 
and your head touching without putting a pillow under. Not that that's, that has to be that way, but your body has naturally already maybe used to doing this. If you, let's say, like you said, typing on the computer for many, many years, and, and that's kind of how you naturally are. You get off the desk and you still read that same way. You know, then that becomes your, your new normal. And in some sense, what you're trying to do is just release the tension and allow that posture to change. Right. And that can only be done with noticing that about yourself. Right. And it cannot come without awareness. So awareness is the, the, the piece that, the crucial piece that, uh, that can help us actually adjust. Because if we just want to be right, that no, I have perfect alignment, mm -hmm. then, you know, okay, that's fine too. I think there's an element too about really being willing to be a bit uncomfortable. If you're changing something that's a habituated pattern, or if you're going into uncharted territories with your body, with your mind, with your heart, there has to be a willingness of, okay, I'm, I'm going somewhere I've never been before. It might be uncomfortable. And I, I'm going to try to sit with that and tolerate that instead of just beautiful hide away from it. Yes. Yes. Again, beautifully pointed out. I think that uh, being in discomfort, learning to be in discomfort, of course, temporarily, because being in discomfort all the time just uh, brings out more stress. Uh, but learning to be okay in discomfort is, is a great, great practice. One of the things that I have actually taken up on um, a couple of years ago is uh, taking cold showers every day. And not that necessarily I want to jump in a cold shower first thing in the morning, so I do take warm shower and then I, and then I take the cold shower for two or three minutes, uh, completely cold. And then in winter, it's really rough. In summer, it's easier. <laughs> uh, but, but again, just taking a moment and finding a practice that works for you that will put you in a place of discomfort, whether it's a physical discomfort that you can learn to relax in or whether it's a mental discomfort, whether it's emotional discomfort that you, you know, uh, talk to uh, uh, somebody, a therapist or somebody that you trust where you can um, lay out your feelings, your emotions, et cetera. So but placing yourself in that place, um, I think daily is, is the greatest practice, really. I agree. I think that's really yeah. important. Yeah, which also brings me to my next, uh, to my next principle that I have for the um, creating harmony with the body, very important one also, relaxation. Relaxation is an uh, uh, important piece because uh, it, one thing, nobody likes to be reminded, hey, just relax. Yeah, sometimes that is actually like uh, punching somebody in the face. But I thought I was relaxed. <laughs> so don't tell me that to relax. You know, and so sometimes that feels difficult as a, as a judgment, but just to truly relax the body, become again aware of um, where your body is and truly release tension. So as we stand, as we sit, wherever you are, um, in Tai Chi practice, what we do, we go through each joint, kind of like I did with alignment. Similarly, you place your body into certain place and then go inside of those places and just release it, release tension everywhere you are now it's easier to release tension when you lay down but it's very hard to release tension when you're standing because of the gravity okay and so so in tai chi it's a it's a practice for years um, people who practice tai chi this is the piece that really takes years to to master is to get to stay relaxed under pressure because Tai Chi is actually martial, martial art. And even though, you know, some people may ask, well, if you're moving that slowly, how can that be martial art? Well, yeah, you're moving slowly in the practice because you're trying to pay attention mentally to every single little step of the way as your shoulder is moving, as your elbow is moving, as your wrist is moving, as your spine is turning, as your body is releasing. That's a lot of process. That's why you have to move slowly at the beginning and so that the process of relaxation is gradual you know first you come to class and may, you may feel like stiff and everything is really hard and everything is cumbersome and and you know as you learn to just release that tension let it go there's a lot of exercises that that will uh, one of them is qigong actually and uh, that will help you to release the uh, tension in the body and the next step is to release the tension um, in your mind and then again you know, I have a for you before you move on to the yeah. relaxation. Um, I have used this with my clients before as a strategy for insomnia, where mm -hmm. as they're lying in bed, 
it's a progressive muscle relaxation technique of starting with your toes and like clenching them really tight for a few seconds and then relaxing them and doing yeah. that with every muscle you can all the way up to your head. And it, I think it achieves what you're talking about. It really reminds yeah. the body that, okay, you're holding something. Maybe it's time to let that something go so that we can rest. Rest is a foreign topic in our culture these days. I don't think it's yes. you know, certainly not supported socially to rest. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not gonna go with that, but yes, it's <laughs> it's it's definitely the opposite. So, uh, and you know, these principles are taught in many other practices. I'm not saying this is just Tai Chi. This is definitely everywhere else. We go to yoga. If you just do meditation, this is the the principle to to work through really to to get into the meditative state. And so, Tai Chi is often referred to as a meditation in motion, mm -hmm. as well. So. Uh, and that's that's the beauty of it. Some people may have a hard time just sitting still. And so Tai Chi is a nice option for somebody who doesn't easily sit still to start with, to move slightly sway or something, and to just um, kind of lull themselves into this, this continuous, monotonous space where, where they can calm the nervous system, et cetera. So, yeah. Yeah, so back to the internal then, it's, that's exactly what it is. It's, uh, you know, you're letting go, literally letting go of, of the uh, uh, weight that you have gathered throughout the day, throughout life, what, whatnot. Um, just deciding for yourself, is this particular emotion that's, that's bogging me over and over, that's, that's bothering me, is it, is it worth for me to keep or can I just um, release into that? So such an important question. And I yeah. think that there's some therapy techniques that can help with that, like writing things down so that you don't hold it yeah. in your body or having a release. Sometimes I'll have my art therapy clients create something that looks messy and then tear it up and destroy it. Mm, and beautiful. It in a new way and kind of create something from the ruins. And so this idea of letting go, I find it to be kind of a like a cyclical process where if you let go in your mind, then your body also wants to let go. And yes. sometimes back yeah. and forth. And sometimes back, exactly. It's sometimes the other way around. So for some people, it's easier to start releasing the body tension first and then get to the mental uh, part of it. And for, for others, it's the other way around. And I see it with all my students. It's very interesting that way. So, and with myself also, you know, I'm first through the body, then through emotions actually. So. Yeah. That's, that's mine, so. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then the third principle we'll talk about is uh, uh, breath, huge thing. So breath actually helps us relax, right? So, you know, I'll explain to uh, my students uh, about the alignment, about the relaxation, how that happens. And of course the relaxation is guided by the breath itself. So as soon as you take a deep inhale, and as soon as you relax, or uh, as soon as you exhale, you're relaxing. That's exactly what's happening in the body. At this point, just being aware of that, that's what happens. Okay, so have the awareness on the breath. Just feel the um, uh, that diaphragm moving in, moving out, moving in, moving out. Just feel that movement. Of course, this is also a, a principle or a way in meditation. That's exactly how some of the meditation practices are. Are there particular breath techniques that you use or is it just simply tracking the breath and potentially deepening it? Mm -hmm. So not necessarily particular breath techniques is more about the awareness of the breath. So yes, tracking it particularly is that uh, you can, you could breathe any way you want to. And a lot, a lot of times I tell students, just let the body breathe for a moment. If you feel like you need to take an inhale, take an inhale, deepen it. You know, if it feels like you're need that take it you know don't don't repress or anything just uh, let it flow and then eventually maybe take a few deeper inhales and then slow and then just slow 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 let it let body breathe and you with your awareness just pay attention to that breath that's all so there's an element of trust trusting that the body knows what it needs and not forcing it into areas that it's not ready to go or maybe maybe the breath is getting stuck somewhere and it just needs mm -hmm. to be able to, to be allowed to breathe in the way that makes it most comfortable. Yes, yes, exactly. And then breath is oftentimes, so, so sometimes what may happen is that you find yourself uh, not being able to breathe through easily because there may be an emotion holding you back. 
So that's very, very common. And, you know, there's something that may have happened that you do, some people, I don't know where the students come from. They just might have come from, a, you know, a, an argument with their spouse or something. And they, their whole world is thrown. I can, I can see that there's not something right with them, but I, I, of course, don't know what it is. So sometimes they have a hard time letting go. And it, for some of them, it works like it's better to just, just feel the body relax. And then the mind, the, the emotional uh, self realigns as well. Not to say that it shouldn't be dealt with. It so does need to be dealt with as well, the emotional piece. And I've learned that some of that hard ways. So it's yeah. very important. Yeah, I feel like the breath is, um, it reminds me of an art therapy technique I do with people about drawing a tree. And drawing a tree is one of the simplest things that someone can do because we've all seen a tree. We all can draw a tree. It's what one of the first things we learn how to draw. And mm -hmm. I feel like that with the breath too. We all know mm -hmm. how to breathe. It was the mm -hmm. first thing we did when we came yes. into life. And so bringing someone's attention to their breath seems like a really simple, but powerful and effective empowerment to say, you're alive, you're in charge, and you have this vehicle, whether you remember it or not, right here yeah. in your lungs. Yeah, this got a couple that beautifully said again. Yes, absolutely. Yes, sweet. I have a couple also examples that I was just uh, introduced to recently. Uh, uh, one by Marissa Peer, who is a, a world renowned uh, hypnotherapist. And she was saying, you know, you have to understand that you can't just take she was talking about abundance, but she used breath as a, as a, as a idea to practice it. She said, okay, abundance is kind of like uh, you take a breath in and then because you're scared, you want to take another breath in and just take another breath in, another breath, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in. Breathe in. You can't. Okay. So you have to exhale. So there is that principle again of yin and yang. Uh, so abundance works the same way, apparently, is that, that we have to give and receive, of course, you know, so, and also she pointed out the opposite, if you just exhale, and exhale again, exhale again, exhale again, <laughs> right, so you're squishing, you're creating tension, so, so letting, again, you know, creating, creates uh, relaxation, it helps, it helps the breath as well, and breath helps the relaxation, vice versa, so it's so beautiful. And one other quick thing I also want to say about the breathing is that it helped me quite a bit. Is uh, um, and I'm not sure if uh, you have heard. Um, I'm sure many listeners have have heard uh, Wim Hof method of breath, and that's uh, you know the Iceman anyway. He's uh, very well known for for his breath uh, practices, and so I follow his uh, practice as well. And uh, it's it's very very. Um, it's very interesting, first of all, because when you're over oxygenate your body and then you quit breathing, you get this, you get this uh, in, infusion of, of just almost like a bliss. It's like a high. <laughs> it's very strange, but it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, um, science behind this practice and it, it's, uh, it's quite powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely try that if you're, if you're interested in uh, pr playing with the breath a little bit. So. Yes, moving into the next uh, uh, fourth um, principle is having the intent. And I know that we've talked about intentionality, uh, but having the intent for, for, for instance, uh, the external uh, intent, first of all, is that when we talk about moving in the body, moving with intent. So once you have your body in alignment, once you have, have relaxation in the body, once your body is naturally breathing, now, thinking about or just seeing yourself, I wouldn't even say thinking about, seeing yourself, how you would like to move, what you would like to move like, where you would like to move, so which direction you're going, et cetera, that has to start with some sort of an intent in your, in your body, in your brain, okay? And so letting the body be directed by the in internal intent, the internal input. Okay, and when we move, I'm gonna lower my camera for a brief, brief moment. When we move, moving from the center core of the body, and that happens not only in Tai Chi, that happens in yoga, they always you know, say move from the core, right? And Pilates and dance as well, very much so. So we have that, you know, for dancers, you have to have that, uh, you know, posture in certain place. Of course, you can move any, any direction, but that movement comes from your center. And there's, uh, it's not it's incidental. It is where our 
the body center uh, around the pelvis, basically, the, what they call um, second chakra, for instance, the creative part, okay? Or, or uh, um, first uh, lower dantian in Chinese uh, uh, terms. And it's the, in Chinese, they have uh, three dantians. It's the lower dantian where the second chakra is, the middle dantian where the heart is, so fourth chakra, and uh, upper dantian where the sixth chakra is in the center of your head, where you have a third eye piece. And so that's that's what uh, in, in Chinese terms we work with, but um, the lower dantian is the energy center. So when the energy flows with ease, it stores like a battery in that a creative place, you know, so. Mm, that's uh, that. My body got warm when you were talking about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's actually quite natural response. Yeah, when we start meditation and and we bring our attention to that to that space. Just bring attention. Don't try to do anything with it. Just bring attention to it, like where it is. Feel it with your awareness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so. it reminds me of some of the neuroscience studies about intention, where the mm -hmm. brain doesn't know the difference between visualization and true action. And so there have been so many professional athletes who have been hooked up with electrodes and sensors to actually test what's going on. And if they're visualizing their game or their ski run or their race, mm -hmm. their body is firing in accordance with that. And so the Absolutely. brain takes visualization as part of the repetition with how it builds the neural pathways for working our body's systems. So the power of intention is amazing and I think it's really underrated but sometimes just being with that intention is is equal or more important than than doing it yes yes very much so beautifully said and I'm so glad you pointed that out because it is very much so that a lot of a lot of times we don't need to do much um, a lot of that can just happen in our in our mindset and so here is where you have opportunity to um, this is what takes me into my internal practice with my intentionality. Here's where we have opportunity to use our mind to do something that is purposeful, to do something that works for us versus something, the gift energy is not to something that we actually don't want, but are perhaps addicted to uh, and, and have a hard time getting away from. So the, the, the mind practice in this is very important. So becoming, becoming, becoming intentional about what you're doing right now. It doesn't have to be, what, what am I going to do after my practice? What am I going to do you know, after lunch? Whatever, just right now. If I'm eating, I'm eating. Okay, I'm, that's what I'm focusing. If I'm, um, of course, you, know, you may be eating and conversing. Uh, so that's up to you to choose whether you're going to do eating and conversing or just conversing or just eating, whichever way you want to do that, of course. Uh, but, but decide for yourself what makes most sense for you. Uh, and be intentional about it. It's a practice of presence, real intentional yes. embodiment and being yes. in your life in this moment. Yes, yes, very much so, yeah. And so finally, our, uh, our last principle is uh, allowing everything, allowing letting go. And I know that letting go was already in the theme of, of all, the, all the pieces that we've done so far, but the last one just allowing the, the things to happen, just uh, kind of for me, it summarizes what I'm doing. So if for instance, I first get myself through the alignment of the body, now align my internal state, my, my mind set, et cetera, then I get to the relaxation. I, Get, uh, I relax about within my body, I relax within my, uh, decide to let my world go for right now. Um, then I'm going to focus on the breath. I feel my breath happening within my body. And, and all this, and, and then I'm you know, thinking of intention and then I let the intention pass. And all that happening is actually a work that can create attention. Okay, it may feel like it's actually uh, a, lot, a lot of, it's like I have to try this, I have to not try this, I need to now focus on that, now I need to focus on that, 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 that. There's a lot of things going on. So at the end, you know, I describe to students what they're supposed to be doing. And then at the end, I will tell them, okay, now forget that. <laughs> okay, let yeah. that go and just allow the movement. Just allow your presence to be shown, your presence to come out. So this is, just ultimate trust. Yes, you, you have to trust, yes. Exactly, beautifully said. Mm -hmm. I think trust and surrender are crucial to having all, yes. all the other four of your principles, right? That there's got to be this sort of 
um, container that we hold ourselves within that is sort of loving and supportive and challenging as well, but held with surrender and trust because ultimately we don't know where we're headed. We're doing our best and mm -hmm. this moment is going to transform and branch into, you know, quantum possibilities and all we have is now. And so trusting that this now will lead us to the next right thing, as Glennon Doyle often says, and mm -hmm. thinking of, you know, one step just leading to the other and trusting. Very much so. Yes. Again, beautiful pointed out. Yes. It is about trust. Yeah. yeah. So um, does that pretty much encapsulate your five principles? That does encapsulate the five principles. Yes. It Thank makes you. a lot of sense the way that when you talk about those, how you pull them into your practice. And it makes sense that no matter who your customer or your client or your group member is, that all five of those principles apply to all of us. Mm -hmm. so I think that's a really beautiful unifying factor that you have in your work. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I was uh, um, obviously trying to decide what what that what that should look like for me, um, is because you know I went through my own practice through my own I still go through my own practice through my own um, uh, growth, and uh, it's uh, it's important to me to have some sort of uh, frame around which I can. Uh, bounce around, I guess. <laughs> Absolutely. It, so, makes sense. it really resonates when you talk about it. Mm, thank you. Yeah. So, and uh, one other thing I will say also with, uh, with the movement itself, for instance, is that there are um, eight main um, gates in Tai Chi. Uh, they, in, in Chinese terms, they are uh, Pong Lu Jian and Tai Lie Jiao. What do, what do those mean? So the four, first four are internal, the second four are external. And because the uh, Tai Chi is a martial art, uh, the external ones are literally learn, uh, taught and, and for the students to learn with um, the, without the internal ability that takes years to practice, that they would have something else in place that they can do in the meantime. Okay, and so, so certain movements, external movements in Tai Chi that happens is you practice and you begin to practice that, that flow, okay, that allowing, that, that the being in that space, being in that moment, being in that presence of the, your body moving, your, your mind being still, et cetera. And so as that's happening, you're actually developing this practice that takes a lot longer, but you are developing it. And so the first one internally is, is called uh, Pong, which is basically an expansion principle. So if you imagine a balloon being blown, for instance, so if you, if you were to sit still, for instance, or stand still, whatever, and if you were to close your eyes, it's easier with eyes closed, not that you can't do without closed eyes, but it's easier. And just imagine that you're, you yourself are a balloon that's expanding as you're breathing slowly. And you're feeling this, this continuous expansion from within. And so as that's happening, you have this internal intent expanding, okay? So that's, that's kind of what it feels like. But of course, uh, uh, the, pr the principle behind this is that you first have to release all the tension in the body in order for the energy to actually run through effortlessly, kind of like through that hose, like I was pointing out, if you keep it squished or, or turned and... Um, if you have the energy running, after a while, your energy field will move your body rather than at the beginning, your body is moving the energy. Oh, right. yeah. Very interesting. So that's kind of how that works. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. So I have one more question just kind of in closing. Yes. Um, a long time ago, when I started my own spiritual journey, a book that kind of set me on the path that I'm on now is called The Peaceful Warrior by Dan oh, yes. Milton. Have you read this? I have not read the book. I have seen the movie. Um, yes. So you're familiar a bit with um, the story yeah. of it. I okay. love the story. Yes. Yeah. So this is a story for, for viewers who haven't seen this or read the book before. It's a story of sort of perseverance through physical challenges by initiating um, mental, emotional, physical, energetic healing. And it's just in a really beautiful display with, um, 
with Socrates, who's the, the teacher of the yeah. students. So my question for you, and we'll just kind of let this be our last question for today, is what is your personal concept in terms of being a peaceful warrior in the world? I've heard you talk today about both using martial arts for self-defense, but also for, for relaxation and empowerment and healing. And so Mark, as the peaceful warrior, can you explain that? Yeah, so so for me, uh, actually, that movie was very moving for me as well. And it's uh, the 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 fact that how he was teaching uh, that was very resonant with with what I was doing as well in in my life with with my practice, etc. So it was a very uh, powerful. It was very very powerful in sense of showing the difference between how we sometimes get stuck in the mind and how we sometimes want to achieve something and, and we're driven and, and uh, let's do this quickly and let's do it properly and with uh, yeah, a lot of force and all. And, and where this guy sit, says, just sit back and relax. Just let the things play out. And while, for instance, there was a one, one of the um, parts where um, the, the Socrates, the teacher showed the, the uh, boy uh, basically that he can't uh, that he has great self-defense skills, that he can take care of himself. When they were initially mugged by somebody, uh, Socrates, the teacher, chose to actually just give what the muggers wanted and didn't fight them. Mm -hmm. And that was just, you know, such a powerful, powerful piece is that we are all looking for uh, some recognition and we want to be seen. We want to feel heard. So recognize so again and and to me that's uh, the ultimate wisdom of, of the, what the what the guy did in the movie in socrates and it was just, just beautiful so mm -hmm. yeah so there's that balance of strength and softness mm -hmm. yeah yes hardness and softness is a, is a yin and yang principle so mm -hmm. we live in both and both are important in its own way yes so. absolutely Okay, so before we close, would you like to just give a shout out for your business and say anything else? So uh, yes, uh, come by eclecticground.com. I have also created a few online programs that are currently for beginners called Spark programs, as in to spark up your interest. And um, you're, um, there's, a, there's a several videos, about 40 videos, I think, for each, each uh, session. So for, for Tai Chi, for kickboxing, for uh, Wing Chun, for Qigong, and for breath practice, stretching, and uh, I'm beginning to now work on the intermediate sessions. So hopefully, uh, yeah, uh, so many hopefully you find something that works for you. Yes, wonderful offerings. Well, thank you from the bottom of my heart for joining me today, Marek, and I really enjoyed our conversation, and I think our viewers are going to just love it. So thanks again and take good yes. care. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much for inviting me, Kate. Appreciate it. It's mm -hmm. always good to talk to you. you too. Take good care.